Hello and welcome to episode 23 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Nick. Matt. Special guest, Matt Gerwer, a.k.a. Matty G. Uh, how's it going? Pretty good, man. Doing alright. Thanks for having me again. Oh yeah, no problem. We enjoy it. So Brad, you want to explain what happened with episode 22? Episode 22 is going to be a lost episode. <laughs> there was a vocal distortion for some unknown reason. Uh, we think we got it fixed this time around, but if I could somehow fix it, you guys will get to listen to it. We should do, like, a secret episode, like, tell them Steve Dave does. They, like, lose an episode, but I'm like, oh, we fixed it. You could buy it from Bandcamp for $1.99. Oh. <laughs> so tight. <laughs> we won't get to hear the Tar Baby reference. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that got cut. <laughs> so, uh, what do you have for treasure hunting? Okay, we're gonna jump into treasure hunting, huh? Yeah, I, I all I got is a box of magic cards and Dragon Ball cards that came in the mail, and nothing good. Here's my first item. Oh, that's tight. X8. Nice. That is tight. How much is this worth? Thirty. Wow. I don't have this one. This is what you found out downtown Dimple? No, that's I found that last week. Oh, okay. Where are the downtown dimple finds? Oh man. Super Nintendo. It was a 7 on the Triboner level scale. Yeah. Both of them combined are. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh cool, Donkey Kong Country. That is pretty cool. It's worth like about 15? Yep. Okay. Oh, Saga Frontier Part 2. That is tight. $25. Sick. Yep. Good treasure hunting. Yeah. Pretty short. You want to talk about uh, almost getting shot? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we were um, go. We were looking at pawn shops uh, last weekend with Jordan, my oldest son, Willie, Brandon's oldest son, and Brandon. So we we're just looking for games, going treasure hunting. So we go into this pawn shop where apparently you have to ring the doorbell to get inside. <laughs> like all pawn shops. <laughs> so we go in there, we look around, we saw Pokemon Fire Red for 20 bucks, uh, Pokemon Diamond or Pearl, one of those. So we bounced, we didn't see anything good. But so we did see something good outside. So, so we were going... Uh, Back to Brandon's car, which is like a block away from the pawn shop, because that's where we found parking. So we passed this van, and there were some little three kids and their three teenagers like eating a Subway sandwich. So I stuck my head in there, like, oh, that's a good sandwich. <laughs> that looks heck good. I'm going to get me one. And then we walk away. Then all of a sudden, this, this black guy comes up to us. He's Mexican. Carlos? No. Uh -uh. He comes up to us, and he's like, you better not know them people in the van. They're about to get shot in the fucking face. Oh, shit. Sure. And I was like, what? No, we don't know that. No, this this is how it went down. He was like, do you know them? And you're yeah. like, no. He's like, good. And of you course, better not. And Brad was like, why? He's like, they're about to get shot in the fucking face. <laughs> and then so he goes, Kevin. Kevin, go back to your car and get your gun. Get your motherfucking gun. <laughs> and he's like, I found the guy that robbed you. And we're standing there with him. And right, then, right, right next to the van, and right, the, with the robbers. And then uh, the the guy's like, not these guys, these guys in this van. And then, of course, I'm like, we got to get out of here. Yeah, Brandon's like, okay, let's go, guys. And Jordan's like, about to shit his pants. <laughs> and Brad's like, let's stay in the car and see what happens. Yeah. So, <laughs> so the, the, the guy who's going to shoot someone in the fucking face, I don't know his name, let's call him Steve, goes up to Kevin and they like go super close to each other and they pass a big ass machete back to one another. <laughs> and the dude takes the knife and goes over to the people in the van and starts to confront them. Yeah, he puts the knife in his mouth so he could jump the back over the fence to confront him. And we just we, we left. We didn't we didn't see what the outcome was, but if Kevin had his gun, I think we would have been in some crossfire. <laughs> because you know Kevin wasn't in his right mind to differentiate us and the guys in the van. He just saw white. <laughs> <laughs> like a raging bull. <laughs> so we're going to do this will of pleasure and pain? Yeah. Do you have a die? 
No, I, I have a six-sided die, but I don't have a 20-sided die. Six-sided die will work. Okay, we've got a six-sided sided die here for Munchkin Zombies. Here's my roll. Oh, no. One pedicure. Nice. So, looks like we're just treating ourselves to a pedicure, because <laughs> that's what you got last week. Yeah. Three? Ten dollars lost in Treasure Bank. Oh, okay, week. good. Whew. No damage to this beautiful body. <laughs> or to the butthole. Yeah. Game of the week. We uh, have Mega Man X3. Huh? Or do we? <laughs> <laughs> no, we uh, actually took a hiatus from Mega Man. And we're going to be doing our own video game for a few weeks. Brad, what game are you playing? I'm playing Ogre Battle. For which system? It's Ogre Battle March of the Black, Black Queen yes. for Super Nintendo. Fuck yeah. Awesome game. I love it. So, I guess I'll start with mine. Um, I went ahead and tried to get Ice Cloud from the get-go, and it took me like three tries. <laughs> so You mean drawing tarot cards? Yeah, in the beginning, <laughs> trying to get Ice Cloud. <laughs> so I kept, wow. I kept getting like Thunder and Ianuki, and I was like, come on, just give me Ice Cloud. <laughs> So finally I got Ice Cloud, which is a hella cool move. Uh, I went up and beat Warren, got, got lands, and then I went to the second level. Uh, long, long level, like it took me like 40 minutes just to get the hang of things and finally beat everybody. Uh, nothing new there. Got to level 3, did not get Canopus. What? I don't know what happened, but I talked to uh, his sister, I talked to Canopus. And then I went and fought Gilbert, and I was like, wait a second, I was supposed to get Canopus, I think. Huh. So I went back in the level, can't get him, so I had to start over. <laughs> so I started over. <laughs> this time I chose to be a, a female, and huh. just see what it looked like. I looked online to see what questions to answer to get Ice Cloud, so it only took me one time. <laughs> <laughs> So I went ahead and I I went south of on level one, got the hurt the buried treasure, went through the water, got the second buried treasure, got lands again, and then I fought Warren again. And then when I fought, I was like, I don't like the way this female character looks. She looks like Marissa, <laughs> who is the embodiment embodiment of Satan that you guys will learn. <laughs> so I had to start a whole new game. So uh, yesterday when I was at my second job on the weekend. Um, I called Sam up and I was like, hey, can you start this new game for me real quick? Uh, and he was like, okay, <laughs> what do you want your name to be? I said, Torment. She typed in my name. <laughs> and I said, okay, read me the questions you get. And I pulled up the guide to get Ice Cloud again. <laughs> Got Ice Cloud. <laughs> and then so he's like, okay, now what do I do? I was like, do I have the priest in my party? Do I have Ice Cloud? Yeah. Okay, save it and turn it off. I'll start <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> So that's where I am. I'm back at level one. Wow. <laughs> and those levels are like, I'm only on the second level and it took like 40 minutes. <laughs> They're long levels. That's the one thing about that game is they don't allow you to save while you're actually in the progress of the level. That's Some of, the, some of them take like three or four hours too. Yeah, and um, I looked and I think there's like 26 levels. And the, the levels on the later part of the game, they said they're like marathons, like three, four hours. Yep can't believe it and then i guess there's a special level called fire, fire dragon seal or something i don't remember it it's like a bonus level at the end which is supposed to be really really long hmm. really huh are you playing it on the actual snes or are you playing it like on an emulator or on the wii i'm playing it on the wii so you can just shut the game off and just turn it back on when you're ready to play then can you i think so if, as long as it's like on your Wii and not on like an SD card, I think you can do that. I noticed that because I like went and turned the power off. Uh -huh. No, what I do, I quit the game and I came back and I was in the same spot. And I was like, what the heck, I want to reset the game. Right. Yeah. But yeah, you can get away with it with the Wii as long as it's installed directly onto the, the Wii memory rather than the SD card memory. The good thing about the emulators, I will say, is you can save it at any time. Yeah, that is cool. So... That probably what I should have done, having a busy life, but I'm just going to do it this way. I'm not, no turning back. No, I think you're okay on the Wii. Like I said, you can you can turn the Wii off and you'll be okay. But if you're playing the cartridge, like on the SNES, then 
you're going to be wasting a lot of electricity leaving it on when you're ready to stop playing. Yeah. Otherwise, you'll lose your progress. Yeah. So I'll be giving an update for the next couple weeks. So that's my game. Matt, what are you playing? Well, I uh, recently heard about the uh, subject and announced I was going to be on the show on Thursday. So I was already uh, on the new GTA 5. So I figured I'd start taking notes of, of what I had done. Um, since I, I was told that this was a subject we were talking about. <laughs> so I didn't have time to get nostalgic and go to any old Nintendo games I liked or anything. But So this is Grand Theft Auto V. Yeah, correct. Cool. Correct, yeah. All right, so what's going on? Um, well, uh, I just documented some of the stuff I did. Um, as you guys know, in that game, uh, kind of tend to not stick to the story sometimes. So there were some funny things that happened, so I wrote some, some notes down. So um, Start off... Uh, well, I guess I should explain. There's uh, in this game, there's three characters you can be uh, versus just one character, like some of the old ones, hmm. um, and you can switch back and forth. Uh, one of the things I like with that is uh, the character the characters are one like middle aged white guy, and then a younger black guy who's kind of gang banger. Um, hmm. I think it's funny because it plays into like racial stereotypes a little bit. So. Uh, one minute you'll be like the older middle-aged white dude and you'll be like having problems with your family and like your wife uh, which one of the stories I'll tell you about and then uh, you switch to the black dude and all of a sudden you're like having gang shootouts and like doing drug deals and stuff so <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny um, so I started off as Michael he's the, uh, the white guy um, uh, and, and what's weird about it too is when you start off uh, uh, it won't be like you're in your house where you stop it's like the guys like continue living even when you're playing and not playing so all of a sudden I was just in a random park and there's a park ranger talking to my guy, my character <laughs> and uh, as I started he's like talking shit to the park ranger telling him to beat it. So uh, I see in the distance uh, after he does that and gets off the bench I see in the distance there's a, a, a banshee uh, or no a car so I hop in it start to drive and as soon as I uh, uh, start to drive I see a viper pass me so naturally I cut him off. Are there like and, monsters in this game? I know. Yeah. Banshees and Vipers? Oh, those are obviously car names so, <laughs> for those of you that play Grand Theft Auto. I was like, there's a Banshee? Yeah. Yeah. I'm about to get this the, game. Ban the Banshee is the car that looks kind of like a Dodge Viper. So I see that um, and I decided I need to hop out and steal that. Uh, and all while I'm doing this, I'm getting a phone call from my wife who's telling me she's in the back of a cop car. So I steal the car uh, while I'm on the phone and drive and uh, track down where my wife is. And once I. Uh, I find her, you have to get in a cop car and drive, and, and it sucks because the cop car is real squirrely and stuff, um, but uh, all the cops are chasing you, and you have to basically just drive and tell you uh, don't have any cops following you and stuff. What'd she do to get in jail in the back of the um, cop car? You know, I don't remember that. Prostitution? Huh? Um, Prostitution? I don't know if the wife did that. Maybe she was shoplifting or something, um, but... Uh, I actually don't don't remember that. Sometimes the banter in that that story in the game, you kind of lose track of what's going on because there's so much going on in the world. Um, so I save her, um, and then uh, went to go back. I decide that the cop car is not gonna uh, get me there in time. So there's a uh, this Tesla, like uh, you know the the electric electric cars. So it looks like a Tesla, and that car, like as soon as you accelerate, it just picks up to top speed right away. So it's super fun to drive. Uh, so I get that, and then uh, take her back home. Um, then head to this other guy who uh, is kind of a nerdy dude, and uh, you're doing missions with him. He's uh, he he's first mission you did with him. He's getting back at like this Steve Jobs type guy who's coming out with the new Life Invader phone, um, no. kind of a play on the Apple phone and how they spy on you. And you actually uh, you actually blow the dude up on his keynote. Uh, that's <laughs> kind of funny. Uh, during that one, uh, you had to dress like a techie nerd to infiltrate them. So you're wearing like uh, cargo shorts and a vest. And like some like uh, some of those like outdoorsman type shoes, you know. Yeah. Um, so I'm wearing that, and uh, I realize that you know that outfit won't be uh, won't be suited for what I want to do. So I have to go and switch out of those clothes and get on some, some cooler clothes. So I got my closet, put on a suit and stuff. A Geek Squad shirt. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's what I was in basically. Um, so I do that, and uh, and then he uh, he talks about. Um, um, actually, I switched out of the clothes, but then I decided I want to be Franklin for a little bit because mm -hmm. uh, nothing was going on with Michael at the time. So Franklin is the uh, the black dude who's like gangbanger. Uh, you switch over to him, and, and immediately one my, one of the guys, because like I said, they're they're automatically uh, already doing something when you switch into him. So one of his friends comes up. He's like, "Yo, man!" He's like, "These guys are uh, these guys are on us. Come with me." And you go to this warehouse, and you have this all of a sudden this shootout. You kill a bunch of the purple dudes, the, the purple gang. And uh, um, and then uh, 
you know, it, it's just funny how you got the shootout with him, and then you got the the dude who has the wife problems on the other hand. I, I thought that's that funny if you if you switch back to Franklin, they're both like sitting out on the porch, and it turns out, man. You got Kool Aid, but no sugar. <laughs> they say, no better, no joke. They say stuff like that all the time. Um, one other event I will tell you uh, before I wrap this up uh, that, that we that I did was pretty funny is uh, like there's random events and uh, I was driving around as uh, Michael again and there's this like you're in Hollywood because it's like L.A. or whatever and you, this girl's like just come here, come here, I need your help and you find out it's a girl that's trying to uh, escape paparazzi so she's like I need to ride so and so you know wherever. So she gets in your car and she's telling you about how she's fat and stuff or whatever and the whole time and how she like is self-conscious and, and she doesn't want pictures taken. So I end up dropping her off at her house and she's like, all right, thanks. Well, you know, if you ever need anything, you know, give me a call. I let her out. I look down to write my notes um, for this and uh, look up and I see her on the porch smoking a cigarette. I was like, oh, hell no. So I get out of the car, pull out my shotgun and shoot her <laughs> and then drive off. Yeah. So a natural a GTA style. So. <laughs> just because she was smoking a cigarette. Yeah, 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 yeah. you know, just because she looked happy, you know, like I delivered her, and I figured there'd be no repercussions because it wasn't a part of the game. So, so I, I blew her away. So. I thought that was pretty sweet. That's uh, pretty funny. Yeah. Now I'm on uh, working on like a heist thing with uh, Michael, um, and, and actually I found out that uh, Franklin is gonna be joining in in the heist because Franklin and Michael had met. So Franklin's gonna be like the wheel man for the getaway. So oh, that's, that's kind of where I'm at now. Hmm. So, but you know, you get lost in that game because there's so much going on. It's like a living world, you know, like a second life type thing. So yeah, it's pretty fun. Cool. So, yeah, I've seen a commercial for that. I haven't actually played it yet. From, is it like an online game? Do you interact with other people? Yeah, they actually uh, it, they had single player going um, just up until uh, I think Thursday or Friday, and online went live. And uh, I haven't played online yet, but. Uh, my brother and my brother-in-law both have been playing, and they said it's fun because you can uh, join in and like, like buddies can can hop in the same car and do like heists together, or you can like put a hit on your friend, and then everybody else sees the hit, so they go and kill your friend. And wow. um, I heard it's pretty cool. So I haven't done the online yet though, because I, I like playing uh, with games. I like playing the missions first, mm. and then going and doing it online after I beat the game, or at least got got pretty far in the game. So I'm wondering if like your character really is doing stuff while you're not playing like in the online world if he's actually oh yeah things. like progressing well he, he'll like all of a sudden be wearing different clothes and stuff so <laughs> i don't know if he's like shopping or like uh, if you ever come back and like your all your money's gone <laughs> <laughs> no no there's you're a strip like club in it though but <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's become a strip club. so um but no uh, are they naked girls uh there i haven't seen any yet there's in bikinis and stuff even at the strip club, I thought I was going to see some boobs or something, but... Uh, it's not uh, good enough. That's no, whack. No. Yeah. So. Did you watch that video I posted on Facebook called Dumb Ways to Die in GTA 5? No, I missed it. It's pretty funny. Someone <laughs> wrote a song called Dumb Ways to Die in GTA 5. Yeah. It's pretty funny. It just shows all the different ways that you can die. I'll have to tough. check that out. I've That's definitely found a few i like uh the car wrecks in this one are pretty good you fly through windshields and stuff like that mm. so yeah it looks like when you die like it does a little slow motion yeah 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 uh-huh yeah yeah it's, yeah, pretty, it's cool. pretty cool and you're like sprawled out so mm. yeah what's funny is one of the deaths was jumping out of a car when tra traveling at top speed mm -hmm. and they showed him do that like he, he was like you he just had, tuck and roll <laughs> he had just no this one was funny because he had he obviously just gone over a hill and the car was like in, in midair when he jumped out and he didn't even like the velocity uh, they have all sorts of cool technology now but the you, you could tell they didn't factor in the velocity he just dropped straight down to the ground so he, <laughs> he as he jumped out of the car he, his momentum didn't keep keep him going straight yeah he just dropped straight down it's kind of funny looking but that's not how he died like if you watch the video you can see like he gets hit by a cop car immediately after that <laughs> and that's how he died it's pretty funny <laughs> that's pretty tight <clears throat> So, here's my game that I've started playing. I know what it is. I figured it out. Brandon's been hinting at it, try, trying to tease us with it. I heard his was a secret. Is it a second generation or a third generation? Wait, wait, wait. Listen. Imagine a world where dragons, <laughs> forests, and mountains come together. It is Tales of Destiny. Did you guess that? Yeah, I figured because you're like dang we never played that game and they're like I know what my game of the week is <laughs> like two seconds later <laughs> so how is it 
Uh, it's pretty good. Okay, let's move on. No, sorry. <laughs> okay. That's cool. <laughs> uh, made in 1997. <laughs> Tells of Destiny by Namco. Uh, the perspective is three quarters down, like Secret of Mana and Chrono Trigger, that type of uh, action. The graphics are cell shaded. It's not that polygonal stuff you uh, started seeing around PlayStation. So like Wind Waker? Kinda, but more like Secret of Mana with better graphics. Uh, uh, you start the tale of a young man named Stan, S-T-A-H-N, uh, sleeping in what appears to be a train or a ship. Uh, you're basically a stowaway and some guards find you and they take you to the captain and come to find out this isn't a train or a ship that you are riding in. It's an airship formed out of a dragon. Oh, shit. Dang. Like the skeleton of a dragon. Wow. It's Hecatite. It's called the Draconis. <laughs> uh, after the general interrogates you, he, he says that he, he's like, you're, you're here to steal it, aren't you? And you're like, no, I'm just trying to get to uh, a different city because my small village sucks, basically. He, the kid wants to become famous. And so after beating him up, he, and he's like, if you're not going to admit to stealing it, we're going to have you swab the deck. So they take him up to the deck of the Draconis, and you're sitting there swabbing the deck. And all of a sudden, monsters start attacking this uh, ship, and they're here to steal what the general is trying to protect. So the guard that watches you gets killed, and uh, your character, Stan, runs down the stairs and says he needs to find a weapon in order to fight these monsters. So you basically wander around the ship until you find uh, a weapon. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Brad. <laughs> uh -huh. So you find this weapon. <laughs> you find this weapon hanging on a wall. And you pick it, and it's chained up. I wonder if Brad approves of this game or not. <laughs> <laughs> because I just... I thought it was going to be quiet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It sounded like it was forced out. Yeah. No way I was going to be quiet. Uh, so, you see this sword chained up to a wall, and... Uh, you unchain it and take it, and all of a sudden it starts talking to you. You find out this sword is named Dimlos, and he's a swordian. <laughs> Dude, can you stop? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Dimlos starts talking to you about how he was born in the Aether Wars, which was eons ago. Now the battle, you start fighting enemies. It's like a side-scrolling um, fighting game, like. Street Fighter, uh, fight? yeah, but it's it's uh, 2D, so you go back and forth, and you attack enemies. You could push up and attack, and you do like a dragon punch with your sword, and oh, you have okay. all these magic spells. Um, like... kind of like Tales of Fantasia. Yeah, yeah. You play that game? Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah, t it, same company, I guess. Oh, Tales yeah. of Destiny, Tales of okay. Fantasia. Oh wow, okay. And. Uh, so Demos gives you a spell called Fireball, which is pretty cool, and you learn skills throughout leveling up. Oh shit! <laughs> oh, I'm getting tired. <laughs> oh, I got it. I got a light here. <laughs> Nick's holding up a light for him. Yeah, we're we're, we're recording outside in the dark, in the dark. and uh, it's like eleven o'clock at night, and it's it feels nice out here. Uh, I finally get to a save point after like 45 minutes of gameplay and realize, oh, I need a PlayStation 1 memory <laughs> card to okay. save on a PS2, so I have to stop my game and run up to Dimple and grab one, which luckily they had. So that was my excursion in Tales of Destiny. <laughs> I'll try to be more detailed next week. <laughs> <laughs> and Nick, what are you playing? Um... After the uh, the lost episode twenty two, I went to Brad's house and I borrowed an SNES from him, 
just the previous week on episode 21, both Brad and Brandon confirmed that the greatest SNES game of all time is Lufia 2, a game that I'd never played before, so trusting their judgment, I went ahead and uh, gave it a shot. And so far, I like it. Um, that's what I've been playing. I started playing about a week ago. Um, it's called Lufia 2 Rise of the Sinistrals. I'm still not really sure what a Sinistral is in the opening scene. Uh, you see two, I suppose they're Sinistrals. They're called Eric and Areem or something like that. Areem. Mm -hmm. And you, it says something about some sword illuminating and it's a sign that it's their time to rise or something like that. Are you familiar with the story? Yes. They could probably tell it to you better than I am. Is it pronounced I just... Sin Sinestrial or is it... In the DS version, it's pronounced Sinestral. Uh -huh. But me and Brandon just call it Sinestrals. Okay. Why do you ask? Because uh, maybe the pronunciation of it could determine like what they are or something. I, I just wasn't sure because when I read your text, that's how I read it, so I wasn't sure if it was mm. the correct way. Is there a de definition for a Sinestral? Uh, no, but I, I guess I was thinking like... Trying to delve into the Latin roots or something? No, I guess <laughs> I was thinking of... of Estrio, like terrestrial or whatever, oh, like okay. sin, like Damn. maybe like evil like beings or something like that. No, there's not. It's not sinestrial. It's okay. sinestral. Okay. Okay. Right. Sorry about that. Yeah, this right. isn't a Katy Perry song. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get that reference. <laughs> Extraterrestrial. Um, song. Uh, Extraterrestrial. So anyway, the, there's actually a really long beginning sequence, and I didn't have the patience to sit through the whole thing. I just wanted to start playing, but I remember that that first part is just kind of the introducing you to what the Sinistrals are and that it's their time to rise. Uh, so you, the character that you play as is Maxim? Or yes. Such a tight name. Maxim? Yeah. It's Actually, an interesting I, name. I asked Cassie what she thought of that name because we're having a kid, and she said, that's stupid, it's a magazine. So. <laughs> <laughs> you tell her, but, that's stupid because this came up before that. That's, that's yes. <laughs> I've lost a few battles, but... Anyways. Um, so, yeah, you start off as Maxim, uh, and in, immediately you're introduced to Tia, who is obviously crushing on Maxim. But Maxim seems somewhat oblivious to it. Um, I, they are from a town or a city called Elsid. That's kind of where your story takes place. You learn that Maxim is a monster hunter, that he, he hunts monsters for a living. And it seems like they're, the, the population isn't really too concerned with monsters, even though they're <laughs> called monsters. They're, they're like, well, these monsters are doing bad things now. Something must be wrong. <laughs> I don't know why they're called monsters if they're not doing bad things. But anyway... I, I think maybe they're equating monsters to just animals, maybe. Hmm. But, uh, yeah, so that's kind of how the story starts. But, that they notice that monsters are starting to, to get smart. They're starting to do things just to be sinister. And uh, so Maxim, he heads out to... Um, the, the first note that I have is that he headed to Sunnelton. Uh, oh, yeah, he had to go through a like a cave or a dungeon to get under the mountains to get the Sunnelton and there's like some key there's a key to the gate to Sunnelton that you have to acquire while you're going through the dungeons and you have to get it from this guy this lizard guy thing um ah Jesus I have so much notes I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to summarize it I bet you don't have as many as uh, Brandon did, it's, so. it's actually quite a bit <laughs> So um, I, I felt that I was going over, and then because I went second, and I saw him, I was like, "Oh, I could have talked more." About <laughs> uh, so after after he beats this lizard guy, he you are introduced to this character named Iris. She's a very um, mysterious character. You don't really know a whole lot about her, but for some reason, he believes everything that she says. She tells him that like he's basically the chosen one that he's chosen to protect the humans from the rise of the sinistrals. She doesn't actually say the rise of the sinistrals because I don't think anyone's really aware of what that is yet. She just kind of gives him an ominous message that, you know, the world is under attack and he's going to be the one to, to protect them. So he continues on his journey. Um, it's kind of weird. Maybe I'm missing something, but it, it seems like the game is moving on from town to town. Like I went from Elsa to Sunnelton, Sunnelton to um, the Lund's Kingdom. I went from the Lund's Kingdom to... Um, was the next one Tan Tanbill, mm -hmm. 
and then after Tanville, I'm going to Clemento. So every every town that you go to, you kind of know where you're supposed to go to next. But I'm still not really sure what the end game is. It doesn't really say, oh, our final destination is here, but we have to go here in order to get to there. It's more like, oh, we're going here. Oh, we're going here. Oh, we're going here. And it just keeps progressing. So, I, I mean, I like the way the game's playing. It's it's a cool game, and you're picking up more characters as you go along, like in... Um, and Tan Bell, you're introduced to this guy. He's named Guy, aptly <laughs> named. Uh, he's this. He's the brother of Hilda, who you um, who you who you meet in the Alun's Kingdom. She's trying to get over to Tan Bell, but after you acquire the key to open the gate to Tan Bell, she becomes very friendly with him. She says, "Oh, visit me when you come to my city. I have an inn there. We'll we'll treat you to dinner. We'll give you a place to rest." So when you get to Tanbell, immediately you're in, you you know Hilda's there and her brother Guy are there. And once you uh, talk to Guy, Guy is out training in the back courtyard, and he immediately challenges Max and Mencia <laughs> to a fight. And just before the fight's about to start, um, monsters come along and they challenge both Max and Antia and Guy together. Of course, you're victorious, but um, the bad guy, I think his name's like Kuna or Cooney oh, or something like Camus. that. Camus. Camus, that's what it is. <laughs> Fucker, I <laughs> forgot about it. He, he abducts um, Hilda, and he takes her to the, the southeast tower yes. of Tanbell. So you go there, and you, you rescue you rescue uh, Hilda. You go, of course, you go back to... Um, actually, after, after you rescue her... Cam Camus? Yeah. <laughs> he tears down the, the tower, hoping that he's going to destroy everyone in the party. But again, Iris comes back, and he, and she, you realize that she's obviously not human. She has some sort of totally mystical powers. She warps the entire party out of the tower and back to the town of Tanbell. In that tower, were there like heck of puzzles, too? There were a few puzzles, yeah. yeah. The, the the puzzles in there are amazing. They they get better and better. I I know I made note of one that uh, where there it was like kind of like a cloth face yeah. on the ground, and you, depending on what time you you moved objects around, different things would happen in the room. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty cool. I, I did like that. Did you um, find the secret room <clears throat> when you put them both? I think at twelve. Yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. Cool. You get um, the rock helmet. I think. I think it was or called the jet like, helmet. Now, the jet helmet you get in the, the dungeon before that, I think this was the June helmet. June helmet. Let me make sure of that. Oh. Oh, I wrote it down somewhere, but I, I don't remember. I'm pretty sure it's the June helmet. So anyway, that's what that's where I'm at right now. Um, I actually text messaged Brad and Brandon last night about... Um, there's some typos in this game, like it didn't translate over from Japanese entirely. Yeah. Um, this wasn't just a typo. It was it was just like complete Not wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so got got you're trying to figure out you know where you're gonna go next because you start talking to all the townspeople as you do in RPGs, and um, you talk to guy's girlfriend. I can't remember her name right now. I think it's like June or something like that. And she says, you know, where are you off to next? And he says, oh, we're going off to the southeast, past the southeast tower, out to Sunnelton. And you're like, wait, Sunnelton is over the other direction. We just came from there. Why, why would we go back to there? But then as you talk to the other townspeople, they tell you that you're going to go to the southeast and go to this town called Clemento. So it looks like the the writers or the game makers, how, whatever, someone was at fault here, but they put the complete wrong town in, so you could get lost if you actually gave any guy any credit. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, another thing that was interesting about this game, there are these things called capsule monsters. There's not a whole lot of detail on the on them so far. Uh, they say that you can like grow them if you feed them certain things, and like they gain experience. But you can't really you can't control them. You're kind of just like their master, almost like Brad and Brandon compared them to Pokemon, basically. Like they're gaining experience, you train them, but you you don't tell them exactly what to do. So I have one now I found in the Fumi Woods. His name is Gels, and he's just he just looks like a white blob on the screen. I, like soap. Yeah, kind of <laughs> soap. Every once in a while he does this move called the Fumi Punch, which <laughs> delivers a bit of a blow. But he hasn't really done a whole lot for me other than take damage. When you know when the opposition is fighting, occasionally they'll hit him, and he doesn't have an HP meter. So I'm like, all right, go ahead and kick his ass. <laughs> Who cares? But that's where I'm at so far. I like it. I'm hoping you know. I'm hoping it'll get better because I, I like to know where I'm going 
before I actually get there. So I'm hoping at some point, you know, a little bit more of the uh, story will be told. It will. I'm sure it will. And I'm looking forward to the ancient cave that Brad and Brandon hyped. Yeah. We're going to dress up in, in capes and uh, conquer it together, I think. Yeah. <laughs> We got our manhood show. Huh? We got our manhood show. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you gonna be part of that, Matt? What's that? <laughs> you gonna be part of that? Manhood show? Like, <laughs> like, let our manhood show. Oh, let your manhood show. As we're playing Lufia. No. Oh, wow, that sounds a little weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. <laughs> Completely normal. Nick said there was anal beads in that game. Is that true? Or... <laughs> I think one of the capsule monsters. <laughs> <laughs> or the dragon eggs. Oh yeah, there's dragon eggs in there. You you just pick one up in a dungeon. And doesn't really tell you anything about it at all. That's the I, I like the game, like I said, but there's just so much stuff going on, and they don't really tell you what it's about. But it's cool. There's people who explain like the dragon eggs later on. I'm sure they will. That's why I, I as I keep playing, I know that more of the story will be told. But right now, it's just like I'm in the dark on a lot yeah. of things. Yeah. Like even. <laughs> One thing that Brad, Brandon, and I were talking about was this, that there's a three meters on the battle screen. There's HP, there's NP, and there's IP. So I know what hit points are, I know what magic points are, but I was like, what the fuck is this IP thing that's on the bottom here? I know what it does. It gives you, it, with certain items that you're using, will give you special attacks if you have a an increased IP meter. So I was like, what the fuck is this IP? What does it even stand power? for? <laughs> no. That would make sense. Right. <laughs> There's so many things that could might make sense, but it'd be nice if they at least explained what it was. Because it fills up as you get hit. Exactly. So, and they explain that. They explain that it will, you know, build up as you're taking damage, but they never say what it is. They just call it an IP meter. Yeah. What the fuck's IP mean? What does that mean? Uh, Brandon looked it up and he found that it, it was Ikari points, which <laughs> apparently Ikari translates to like battle or uh, anger. Anger. An anger. That's yeah, what it was. It's anchor or anger. So I'm, we're <laughs> guessing it's anger. <laughs> anger points, which is kind of weird. I mean, you'd, you'd at least think they would explain it at some point, but they never do. And I concluded that the game Ikari Brothers is it Ikari Brothers or Ikari Twins? Ikari, Ikari Warriors. Warriors yeah. That's what it is. Is uh, it actually translates to Angry, Angry Warriors, <laughs> which is not a very good name for a game, so I guess Akari's better. So we have a pretty interesting top five this week. It's pretty hard to come up with. Uh, top five accessories or equipment for in video games. Yeah, when Brad and Brandon were first uh, mentioning this topic, they said no weapons, but... I couldn't think of too many that were specifically not weapons. So I do have some weapons on my list. I think Matt does as well. Yeah, Nick told me the uh, subject of this, and he said that they are uh, game accessories, so uh, naturally all mine are weapons. I didn't specifically say no weapons, but I, right. I did say they are accessories. <laughs> so. so guess first. Would you like to start off? Uh, yeah. So, so uh, I guess, uh, do, do we do just one at a time, and then, or do we do our whole list? Do we do uh, number five, and then number four? All number right. Um, I was asking you earlier, I have some honorable mentions. Do you want me to kind of just we'll say some of those? We'll do those at the end. If they, if they don't come up, we'll, we'll do them at the end. So. Okay, okay, okay. Or if maybe you guys say one, I'll say, oh, that was my honorable yeah, mention yeah. or something like that. All right, cool. Well, uh, we'll start off with number five. I don't have a whole lot of notes on it. Everybody should know. Uh, the spread shot in Contra. Yeah. I felt uh, Contra being an iconic Nintendo game, I mean... You're, you're racing with your buddy, and when that S-Wing pops up, you guys oh, are racing yeah. to get it, and whoever gets it, you lay down and basically kill everything with it. So that game being uh, being one of the hardest games I think I've played, uh, if you don't use the, uh, the Konami code, uh, Konami yeah. code yeah. Uh, that uh, that weapon definitely helps you get through some of the stuff. So I thought that was a good uh, good one, number five. I kind of like the flame better. The flame? Yeah. <laughs> it, it, now, it, it, it's been a while since I played it. Didn't it like spin, like swirl, or whatever the it, flame one? Or the was flame, the flame was straight? It was just like a straight, like, blow toward it. Right. <laughs> wasn't there one that like shot and it like spun around or whatever? Uh, or that that was, shot it? I think B, wasn't it? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> B. yeah. No, yeah. B was barrier. <laughs> B wing or something? There is one that's, that's fun in this one. No, I'm just kidding. I, I, Fred was definitely my favorite. Yeah, I figured you were kidding. But. Yeah. You going this way? Uh, sure. Okay. Uh, my number five, I thought about what I was so excited to get when I started playing a game. I thought about what I couldn't live without in certain games. 
And in Final Fantasy III, there is no way I'd be able to beat that game without the sprint shoes. All right. Oh, I forgot about that one. I was so anxious to hear these guys' stuff because I couldn't think of anything. That's a great one. The sprint shoes just saved that game because the first, like, two towns or whatever, you're just walking, and it takes forever yep. to get point A to point B in a town. And when you finally get those sprint shoes on, they go, like, double the speed. It's like you're on crack just running around. <laughs> yeah. What do they look like? You don't see them. You don't see them. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so I've, like... I've never played Final Fantasy, so yeah. I don't know. That's one it's thing I have to give credit for Luffy on. Freaking Maxim books all over the place on that game. Whether it's in a dungeon <laughs> or in a town or freaking in the overworld, he runs everywhere. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Heck of that. You have to hold down a button. No. Oh, okay. You no, just you hold don't. down left and he books over to wherever you, wherever you <laughs> tell him to go. Yeah. Right. yeah, so sprint shoes, that's one thing I couldn't live without. That's oh, my yeah. number five. I totally agree with that. I wish I would have thought of that. Um, I mean, that item is so vital. You you would risk, like, you know, if there was some relic that you could put on that would, you know, make you immune from poison or make you immune from instant death you would put those sprint shoes on just to get around everywhere i remember doing that all the time it's a great one and then when you went in kefka's tower or to another place where mm -hmm. you split up every p person of the three person team had a pair of sprint <laughs> yeah. shoes on yes. <laughs> that's a great one dude and then i remember thinking one time switching back and forth where's my fucking sprint shoes <laughs> <laughs> i spent like 20 minutes looking for the sprint shoes and kind of find out uh, like Gao and Cyan were holding them and they're on the same team. And I was like, doing on the same team. So I'd actually restart to my last save point just so I could put them on separate teams so everybody could have a pair of sprint shoes. <laughs> nice. Alright, so my number five was uh, the bombs that Samus used in Metroid. Mm -hmm. um, you could argue they're a weapon, but they also serve a conventional purpose. Yep. Uh, if you're not familiar with Samus, uh, with Metroid, you can... Uh, do the infinite jump with the with the bomb and that's why i put it on this list so as as samus rolls up into a ball basically her only weapon or accessory <laughs> <laughs> is a bomb and um if you're able to time it right the bomb will knock you up and will knock samus up into the air and then samus can lay another bomb in midair and if if he timed it the right way she can get another propelled propelled upward again from that bomb and so on and so on and so on so it's called the infinite jump bomb jump. So I wanted to give that one some props. Tight. Uh, my number five is also from Final Fantasy, but this is something. Uh, it's from Final Fantasy VIII. Yeah, <laughs> no. Uh, it's the. Uh, <laughs> it's the. Uh, Matt's like, why is that? <laughs> What's so bad about Final Fantasy VIII? <laughs> <laughs> is that a bad one? Yeah, it's pretty bad. It had an emo character in it. Oh, it's like the the <laughs> Spider Man three of, yeah. of Final Fantasies. All right, gotcha. Uh, it's the ribbon. Yeah, uh, prevents any type of ailment, status yes. ailment that could affect you: poison, death, uh, paralyze, right. um, stone, uh, anything. And it's uh, in multiple Final Fantasy games, but that was always like the the top accessory to get. Usually get them in the later dungeons. Yeah. Like but that was my only gripe is like usually there's only like one or two that yeah. come up. Yep. You uh, like I think in part two there was only one. You yeah. Get from I, the floating eyes. And then you can I think the one of the pink puffs drop it too mm -hmm. as a rare 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 item. Yeah. But who has time to fight pink puffs? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Cool. All right. Uh, my number four. Uh, as you learned from my brother, uh, our family played a lot of computer games. Um, his call out to War War Warcraft Three was it where he like named off like eight characters? <laughs> on his I don't even know he played that game, but anyways. Uh, so my number four is from a computer game uh, Unreal Tournament. Um, it's a pretty iconic uh, multiplayer shooter game, uh, and uh, there's a gun on there called the ASMD Shock Rifle. Um, That's a lot of letters. The, ASMD. Yeah, I, you know, and I should have researched what it stood for, but. Uh, I didn't, sorry. Uh, but there's a, the, the regular rifle, which was pretty cool, and it did this like cool effect where you could shoot a plasma ball, and then if you shoot the plasma ball, it makes a big explosion. So that was cool and all, but uh, some, some guys actually did a mod to it and uh, made it enhanced, and that kind of became the weapon of choice in the game, and, and it kind of changed how the game was played because instead of using multiple weapons, everyone was using pretty much one weapon and jumping. And the enhanced one uh, is my number four. Uh, that it's, you basically would, as soon as you click, it would be uh, 
it would shoot and be at where you shot. Okay. So basically, if your crosshair was on the character, as soon as you clicked, the person was dead. Uh, kind of like a one shot, one kill thing. So it added a different skill to the game. I thought it was uh, pretty cool. So right. my I have four. to give props to Unreal Tournament because Bioshock used the Unreal Engine. So many games use yeah. Unreal Engine. It's cool. Actually, a uh, side note, I met uh, some of the guys that developed uh, that that Unreal Engine out of San Francisco. They make uh, Astro headphones, which uh, pairs with Skull Candy headphones. Uh, what were you doing in San Francisco? <laughs> No, actually, it was in Park City where I met the guys because I worked for Skull Candy and they were uh, Skull Candy bought Astro, and uh, the guys at Astro uh, had built the Unreal Engine, and uh, they actually helped design the Xbox too. I don't know if you guys knew that or not, but the guys that did Unreal. That's Tournament. why they're in San Francisco because they're gay. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's right. You guys don't like Xbox. So. Well, I, I'm a PlayStation guy too. So. My number four is going to have to be from Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. So many great gear weapons on that game. I had to choose the dual hook shot only because uh, that's the one where you fight the flying dragon on one of the later levels. It's like one of the final levels. And you hook shot all around the arena and kill them that way. That's tight. That was like the best boss battle next to the spinner boss with the, the giant, skull, giant skull demon thing. But um, mine was the dual hook shot from Zelda Twilight Princess. Uh, my number four is from the N64 game Goldeneye. Oh, nice. It's uh, James Bond's Remote Mines. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. And in, in that game, there are three types of mines. There's time mines, there are uh, proximity mines, and there are remote mines. The time mines are really difficult to use effectively because you kind of have to predict where your opponent's going to be when you place them. Uh, and of course, they're timed, so they're just going to go off after five seconds or whatever. So it's really hard to actually hit someone with that kind of just used to blow shit up basically in the real game but I'm talking more like the multiplayer multiplayer game is the most fun for me anyway of yeah, course definitely proximity mines are cool um, they'll go off whenever someone walks near it but the issue with that is that sometimes like they'll go off if you're walking on the other side of a wall or if you're walking on the on the floor underneath where the proximity mines were placed so they're not always you know as effective but the prox are the uh, the re remote mines are just the coolest, dude. So after you place the remote mine, um, James Bond or whoever, whatever character that you're using, what you'll see him like hold a watch up to up to his face, and he ha he'll have his uh, other hand on like some buttons on the watch, basically saying, "I'm about to press this this button that's gonna set this rem uh, this uh, remote mine off." And of course, you're watching your opponent's screen, hope, just trying, <laughs> hoping and praying that they're going to walk by where, where you place that remote mine. But there was another option. If you didn't want your opponent to know that you know you you just laid some remote mines down, you could switch to another weapon, and if you just hit A plus B, it'll set it'll set that remote mine off. So it's really cool. Um, a lot of times, I'd like I'd like go after someone and I try to get him to chase me just to run into that remote mine spot. It's just it's so much fun just to kind of play head games with them that way. Remote mines are definitely my favorite weapon and our favorite accessory mm -hmm. in the N64 game, Goldeneye. So was your basic strategy in that game to look at the other person's screen? I never did that. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I did that all the time. That's what my, Brian, my little brother, uh, always claimed that he never looked at people's screen or that people are cheating. and He's probably the biggest cheater. Or I shouldn't say he's a cheater. He just, any leg up he can get, he, uh, he takes advantage of. I, I felt that it was part of the strategy. Of I course mean, it was. <laughs> I mean, if you were playing on separate screens and, you know, you, like, looked over your they, shoulder to they see They didn't really have that, screen. did they? Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. If it was like a computer game and you were playing online, yeah, that's correct. different. Yeah, yeah. But you're correct. playing on a screen where everyone everyone has the same advantage. You can all look at each other's stuff. So yeah, yeah. I didn't yeah. really see it as cheating at all. No, not at all. But... What was your favorite level in that game like, for multiplayer? Um, shoot. Just the facility level. The facility, I think yeah, the, yeah. the vents and all that, of the course. The vents yeah, and the bathroom, sure. yeah. 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 The one in the caves was pretty cool, too, because there were some good hiding spots. It was, it was really dark in there in spots. And... The temple level, I always got lost. Yeah. 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 Man, that, that game was a good game. Yeah. The, that, that game really revolutionized first-person shooters, probably for the worst. But that was probably the only first-person shooter I ever really enjoyed playing. So. There was uh, one game, the earliest, I think, where you could use two TVs to fight each other was Bushido Blade for PlayStation. Oh, yeah. Made by Squaresoft. You both could enter point of view mode where you're holding the weapon, oh, yeah. and the other person could go on the other TV. And there's some way you could hook them up, huh. but I think that's the first time I've seen it. That's cool. 
Okay, so you're number four. four. Mm-hmm. Uh, number four for me is uh, Loomberry from Pokemon. <laughs> Fuck that, that thing. <laughs> <laughs> that that game or that single item helped me beat down Homeboy from Nintendo World. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think this is on the last episode which you guys talked about. Yeah. Basically, I went to Nintendo World, and uh, of course, I brought my Nintendo DS with Pokemon Platinum. Uh, was that in New York? <laughs> yeah, when, when the, you were with Aaron. Yeah, uh, Aaron and or Nolan was throwing a fit, so Aaron took Nolan outside. And like, I'll be out here, guys. We were like, we're not leaving this thing. We just stepped in. <laughs> we were in New think... York for like four hours. We spent two hours in Nintendo <laughs> World. <laughs> do you think Aaron had Nolan throw a fit so that he didn't have to watch <laughs> you do a Pokemon? <laughs> oh, maybe. <laughs> And maybe he pinched him or something. <laughs> Doesn't <laughs> but, take much. <laughs> so uh, the the guy he was, I don't know how we how we met up, but we were on the top. There's two floors. We we're, were on the top floor, and um, it was all epic like. Yeah, your your shirt's blown in the wind. It was all on the <laughs> banister. I was standing over the banister, and so he's like, "Do you have your? Do you play Pokemon?" I said, "Yeah." He's like, "Do you have your game with you?" I said, "Yeah." He's like, you're in a battle? I'm like, yes. So, uh, yes. <laughs> so he's like, no, you can use legendaries if you want, but I'm not going to. So that's fine. So we start, I throw out my Caesar, uh, Adamant Caesar with Technician, Bullet Punch as its main weapon. Uh, technician gives Bullet Punch a plus 20 since it's below 60 power. And then on top of that, he gets stabbed for the same type attack bonus, which flips it up to even, uh, 90. So I've got a 90 bullet punch coming toward uh, his Breloom. He brings him his Breloom. So I'm like, I'm sword dancing because there's no way this Breloom could take me down in one hit. So I sword dance, raising my attack even further. And he uses Spore to put me to sleep. Nope. My <laughs> The Loomberry, uh, pre- it cures any status ailment. Uh, you eat it and it cures a status ailment only once though, but that's all I needed. I snapped out of my uh, slumber. Use bullet punch, destroyed his Breloom. He tries to bring out Snorlax. I'm not having Snorlax. this. Snorlax, I remember that <laughs> yeah. from the cartoon. Yeah. So, since he's got a normal Pokemon, fighting beats normal. So I use Superpower, which is a 100 attack with the Sword Dance. The Sword Dance is greatly sharply raises yeah. your attack. It bumps it up by two. So uh, I hit him with Superpower, kills his Snorlax. He's like, man. That's not, that that superpower is pretty strong, and they brought out some other random Pokemon. I beat it in one hit, <laughs> and uh, I destroyed him. You know what the whole premise of Breloom is, right? What? You uh, use Sport. It's an automatic sleep, uh-huh. and then you. Sleep Why is it automatic? It's hundred percent. I thought it was fifty-five. No. Oh, okay. That's hypnotized. Oh, okay. So you use Spore and then you substitute, uh-huh. and then when you're poisoned with the Toxic Orb, it heals your wounds. Yeah. So you could keep doing that combo. Once you get someone with the the snooze, uh-huh. it's very hard to beat because you snore, I mean, snooze the spore substitute. Then you hit him with focus punch, which is 150 yeah. attack. And then, let's say you wake up, you, they'll just you'll hit the substitute. Then they'll spore and keep going on. Oh, okay. So it's a huge combo. Oh, if you didn't have that lumberry, yeah, you probably would have been grass because yeah. you probably had a strong breloom, but. That's what he gets for not thinking about the Loomberry. Yep. How did you eat a Lumber if you were asleep? Because he's, he's a Caesar. <laughs> Any Pokemon, you could, there's like, um, you you give Pokemon items to hold in battle and they'll automatically use it if it, the condition hits. Like, if you're asleep, you could put it on Chesto Berry and it'll automatically wake it up if they're asleep one time. Then the berry's gone. If there's a, um, if you get poisoned, the Loomberry will heal the poison. Okay. I don't know what Nick is saying though. How can you eat your berry if you're asleep? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess just holding it is good enough. <laughs> All right, ready? Yeah. Well, number, number three. Number uh, three. It's another uh, from another computer game. Uh, it's uh, the Wind Force Bow out of uh, Diablo Two. Um, it actually makes appearances in Diablo One, Two, and Three. Uh, this one, to me, I, I thought was pretty cool because my uncle got me into Diablo 2. Uh, he played it a lot, and uh, you could sell stuff. I, I was I was blown away the fact that he said people were buying stuff on eBay, hmm. and then they'd meet up with somebody and trade them, um, trade them for it in the game and, and, and whatnot. So he actually bought stuff, and I think I was 
you know, too young to buy stuff, didn't have an eBay account, didn't have money, and uh, he found me a Windforce bow and uh, and uh, got it to me. Uh, I was an Amazon character who uses the bow, so um, it's it's pretty much the the most uh, maximum damage bow you can get uh, in the game. Uh, it had some cool. Uh, I'll read off some cool statistics it did. Uh, it gave you a three and one eighth damage per character level, and I, th I think you can get to level eighty in that game. So adds a whole bunch of damage there. Uh, it would knock back when you'd hit them with the uh, your arrows. The the bad guys would base all, because there'd be a bunch of them coming at you. They'd get knocked back, so you'd have more room to shoot. Keep shooting. Um, it would steal steal mana from them, so you could uh, use that against them and keep doing your your special moves like your multi arrow and whatnot. It would uh, slow the other people down, add to strength, dexterity. I mean, pretty much was was the best bow you could have in the game. So. I was just stoked to have it and uh, wreaked havoc with that character for a while and uh, was just excited to have something that uh, that strong in the game. It just made it fun. You can come and you know help and play with your buddies and save them from getting killed and stuff and feel like the hero. So mm -hmm. thought that was uh, my number three. Pretty cool. Cool. My number three is going to be another relic from Final Fantasy III, <laughs> one that I couldn't imagine climbing the Cult of Kefka's Tower without. That would be the Mughal Charm. Yeah. That Mughal Charm, once you equipped it on Mog, it evades all random enemy encounters. And just going up that whole tower, you have to probably go up like 30 floors. Even like in the other caves, when I'm feeling lazy and I don't want to fight all my enemies, I'll just put on the Mughal Charm. <laughs> so that's that's where my life came to, being a lazy gamer, just going through <laughs> the game with the Mughal Charm. I don't think I ever used that. You find it... Um, behind Mog when you meet with him, like, hmm. on the second time. I just never really liked fighting with Mog. That's probably what it was. Yeah. So that was my number three. Does it actually t tell you what it does? No. That that game doesn't tell you what... I guess some of them do. Because I know the Riven says it protects from all ailments, mm -hmm. but I don't think the Moogle Charm has a I don't description. think it does. So I, I think I might have tried it a couple times, and I just didn't know what the hell it was doing. But no. Uh, maybe, maybe if I knew that I would have used it more, but I went the hard way on Kepka's tower, or the Cultus tower, whatever it's called. Yeah. <sighs> my number three is from Mortal Kombat. My favorite character is a Scorpion. Yes. And his spear is my number three. Um, so you know, ever most people know who Scorpion is from the Mortal Kombat series. He's, he's like a resurrected ninja. Like if he takes off his head, you, you can see nothing but a skull. Um. And everyone knows what it means when, you know, you hear, Get over here! You know the fucking scorpion <laughs> just shot a fucking spear through someone's chest and he's about to yank you towards him and he's about to fucking lay a huge uppercut on you. <laughs> Actually, you can do whatever the fuck you wanted to because after the scorpion shot that spear through your chest, you know you're going to be dazed. So scorpion can do whatever the fuck he wanted to do. He, I I usually just did the up, uppercut, but you could do whatever you want. If you want to just sweep him, just to be a little classy, you could do that <laughs> if you like to. Scorpion had some cool attacks. He had he had like this move where he could teleport for, uh, behind his opponent and give him an uppercut. He also had this move where he could catch you in the air and throw throw you down. But the the spear get over here was always the best. Everyone knows what that what 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 just happened when you hear get over here. You know what happened. Scorpion just speared someone. Yep. So that's my number three. My number three is a pair of boots. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it wearing them boots? <laughs> uh, the anti-gravity boots from Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Uh, getting around the castle was pretty difficult. You got you just had a single jump, and then eventually you find a double jump. And then I believe you could turn into a bat. But that was slow as heck. But with the anti-gravity boots, you push down, up, and jump. And you're flying all the way up to the ceiling of the room. And that just covered so much ground. It didn't no matter how high the the area was. Um, you would just fly all the way up to the ceiling and hit the wall. No. That's not true. Oh, that's right. There is one the where... The waterfall? Yeah, the waterfall. There, you had to keep jumping. Yeah. It, it Most rooms, it's automatic ceiling hit. But most of them... Yeah, yes, down up jump, down up jump. I remember that now. Yep. But yeah, that was my the gravity boots. Cool. So uh, my number two was uh, also from James Bond. So I don't know if Nick has any other James Bond things nope. on there, but uh, okay. 
the, the remote lines were cool, but this was uh, by far a uh, way more superior weapon than, than these kind of remote mines. It's R, 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 RCP3, uh, RCP90. 90. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much the most powerful gun in the game. Um, it, it only showed up on three of the levels in the game. Uh, Xena, I believe, had did she have two of them? No, she had one or two. I, I thought she dual wielded two. Yeah, she had two. Um, but uh, in multiplayer, I mean, you basically race out to find that one. Shot uh, it had an eighty round magazine and basically shot. There was no time in between bullets. It just unloaded it right away. Uh, it was wasn't as powerful as the Cougar Magnum, but it was uh, more powerful than the Phantom and the AR thirty three. Um, it uh, could shoot through doors. And uh, it, I, I actually saw online that it got rated number four in that game five's best weapons ever. So uh, mm. uh, that that didn't have any pull on me voting it uh, top or not. But I, I saw that and I thought it was pretty cool too. So um, I think one of the best uh, or iconic multiplayer games and uh, that's the best thing from it, I thought. Yep. My number two is going to have to be the Winter Shield from Bioshock Infinite. That's the one where you um, hook onto the sky hook, mm -hmm. and as soon as you jump on or off, you're invincible for five seconds. Yeah, that saved my life when I was playing it on the hardest difficulty. Mm -hmm. uh, what's it called? Do you remember the hardest? Is it just hard? Nineteen ninety nine mode. Nineteen ninety nine mode. Yeah, that was crazy. But uh, the winter shield saved me a lot, and all the handyman you seem to fight by a, a hook, so that just made them a mm -hmm. piece of cake. So that's my number two. I think it was a shirt, either a shirt or pants, one of those. Mm -hmm. uh, Brad, Brad mentioned this one earlier. My number two is the, I didn't write down double claw shot. I just wrote down hook shot slash claw shot because they're basically the same thing. They're just kind of evolved, I guess. The hook shot made its first appearance in uh, Link to the Past, uh, the third Zelda game yes. on, for the Super Nintendo. The hook shot was cool because, I mean, it, much like the claw shot, it kind of opened the world up for you. You could latch onto things. You could, you know, go over large gorges that you couldn't get over before. As long as there was something to hook onto, you could pull yourself across it. With the hook shot, you could actually even retrieve things. Like if you saw a heart on a ledge across, across from you, you could shoot it and it would come right back to you. Uh, the claw shots didn't have that ability in, like, Twilight Princess and Skyward Sword. Basically, the claw shots were just you used to latch on to things yeah and then eventually um i think in twilight princess you start off with a single claw shot and then you get a double claw shot whereas in uh skyward sword you just once you acquire it you have both of them you have two claw shots yeah. if i remember correctly uh the great thing about having two is that you could latch on to something you could uh hang on it and then use your other hand to latch on to something else so you wouldn't have to you know go to the ground and then use it again you could just keep shooting things to latch on to them uh, it literally opened up a new world for you. You could, there there were levels and places in the world that you couldn't possibly get to without the claw shot. But that was my number two. I remember on Link to the Past too. Me and Brandon were like, "Where do you find this hook shot at that we've heard about?" <laughs> because we were looking all over for it, and you finally find it in the second dungeon of the Dark World. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that was like, we'd go everywhere with that. Oh uh, yeah, there are so many things that you could get. I mean, you wouldn't be able to possibly get. Tons of stuff in that game without the hook shot. That's great, great weapon. That's why it was my number one. Nice. <laughs> uh, my number two is uh, I, I wanted to throw another Castlevania item on here because they had a lot of great weapons. So my number two was the Holy Water from Castlevania. Uh, in my opinion, one of the best sub weapons in the game. That that's a weapon. Sub weapon, so <laughs> accessory. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it was between that or the cross boomerang, but the holy water I felt had more clout uh, with most of the bosses. I know the cross boomerang helped with Dracula, but so the holy water was tight. The holy water is yeah, the, the last form of Dracula in part one. It really helped you beat him. Oh, he's that giant monster, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So. Uh, and even the holy water in Simon's Quest, it showed you where the secrets were. You had to use the holy water to bust out the secret um, entryways or the secret uh, holes in the wall to get clues and stuff. So that's my number two. My number one's from my uh, probably my favorite all-time game. Uh, it's 
from uh, PlayStation 2, uh, now in PlayStation 3, it's uh, the Blades of Chaos from God mm. of War. Um, those of you who play God of War know the iconic blades, uh, the, the combos that it can lead to, just the, the kind of way they spin around. It, it's pretty cool. Um, give you a little black, uh, background on it. Uh, they were uh, chain blades uh, fashioned to your wrist. Um, Ares made them. Uh, he basically made his servants uh, wear them. Uh, once you wore them, uh, they were uh, bonded by fire to your arms and couldn't be uh, taken off until he uh, deemed you weren't his servant anymore. Uh, they were fire imbued, um, so they'd ignite every time you spun them around, uh, which actually added to a cool effect. Uh, and uh, they also, uh, I already said that, let's see. Uh, they actually ended up coming off Kratos, so um, when Ares uh, stripped him from and uh, basically had them kill his family, uh, the Blades basically took a mine on its own and killed his family in front of Kratos, and he was a... Uh, uh, helpless against him and then he eventually when he kills uh, Ares in the end of the game uh, Athena comes down and gives him new blades called the Blades of Athena which are just as powerful as the most powerful Blades of Chaos so uh, that's actually the end of the Blades of Chaos you don't see him again and then now from the games on you have Blades of Athena and then there's Blades of K uh, not Blades of Chaos there's uh, Blades of Exile and a couple other ones but they all stem from those Blades of Chaos which I feel is a uh, probably the coolest weapon in, in that game. So that was my number one. Hmm. Cool. My number one is going to have to be Samus's power suit from the Metroid series. I did a little research on this. It was created by the Chozo, the race where Samus actually learned and trained from. And it's uh, actually a biological suit. So it's like a symbiote. It could be absorbed into her skin hmm. and go away that way or be taken off normally. Hmm. And uh, what makes this armor so unique is it could go to any type of weapon or upgrade and absorbs it into the suit, and that's how she gains the abilities. Like, if there's a technology that the Space Pirates has, she could go over and absorb it, and it'll modify into the suit, and she could turn it on and off and have infinite amount of abilities. Just like she could go on to different planets and find different technologies and become more powerful. That's a good workaround. Yeah, so... That was my number one, is her whole power suit. Was there any evidence of the suit being absorbed by her skin? In, in the manga series, there was. Oh, okay. And um, that's how you get the Phazon suit, and how she interacts with the Phazon and becomes able to beat the Metroid Prime. Mm. So that, that's a good light on the... It, it sheds some light on it for me, because I was always wondering how she got all these upgrades, but mm. that's how it is, because of the suit. Yeah. My number one is from possibly... Probably the greatest Mega Man game, hmm. Mega Man 2. What do you think it is? Metal Blade. Oh, fuck yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is. is. Metal Blade is so fucking awesome. <laughs> Probably the best weapon or best accessory <laughs> that you can get in any of the Mega Man games. Because um, <laughs> you could shoot all eight directions. <laughs> yep, my constant complaint with freaking Mega Man is that Dr. Wily can't fucking create a, a freaking joint in Mega Man's arm so that he can shoot, shoot in different directions. Dr. Freaking, Dr. Wily had it right, man. He he created M Metal Man so that he could shoot in all eight directions. Up, down, left, right, or any diagonal in between. Not only that, but the Metal Blade didn't take down hardly any sort of uh, power at all. So, I mean, I mean, it delivered a lot of, a lot of, uh, damage. a lot of damage, thank you. But it, 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 the tank would not exhaust very quickly at all. You could shoot metal blades all over the place, and you'd barely use any sort of um, energy. And and if you did happen to lose energy with all the freaking robots that you're killing left and right, you, you'll sure, surely get it filled back up right away. Um, as I said, it, it cuts right through most of the robots. There are a couple that, it's, that are immune to the metal blade, but they're few and far between. Most of them it just cuts right through. It's just such an awesome weapon. Uh, even Metal Man himself is, <laughs> is will, will take a ton of damage from the Metal Blade. Yeah, like two hits. Yeah, it's it's crazy. So it's the, probably the greatest game in all of the Mega Man games, so I wanted to give it its due. And you said your hook, hook shot was your number one. Yep. Did you want to add anything to uh, it? Just because it opened up the world, we were always exploring games and always getting frustrated that we couldn't get to where we wanted to. Yeah. So once we get that hook shot, we were going everywhere. Yeah. 
That's how I feel on Lufia right now. Yeah. I feel like I I can't go anywhere, but I know eventually I'll be. You need the hook shot. Yeah. <laughs> there's a, is there a hook shot in Lufia? There actually is. Oh, yeah. Okay. There is. You, you find it next that. to the anal bees or whatever. <laughs> and it's like it's like an arrow that spirals <laughs> out. It's pretty tight. <laughs> it's like, shoo. Yeah. Nice. And you could hit enemies with them and stun it. Like, yeah. Can like, you what? cut a bunch of grass with it at once? No, that's a fire arrow. Uh, oh. I'm spoiling it for me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I thought uh you were maybe gonna have the boomerang from uh, Zelda or Link. I tried to make you think of that. Uh, <laughs> I'm surprised. I thought your uh, favorite character was Link. I'm surprised you didn't pick any accessories. I, I was telling Brad with this topic, I could have done all five. Just yeah, let Link accessories. So instead, you chose none. I did one. Oh, you did. Shot. Oh, that's a Link. Oh, that's right. I, I was thinking. I, I could have done all five though. I mean, the boomerang, the the hook shot. Which, which game was that? That uh, hook shot from? Link, Link to the, the past. past. Link to the past. Okay. What are the iron boots? Iron boots. <laughs> I was I was thinking you guys would be nostalgic and pick something from uh, Legend of Zelda. Yeah. yeah. The Nintendo. The the original Nintendo. Yeah. Uh, right, wasn't that what it was called? Like yeah, the gold yeah. game. The boomerang is probably. The boomerang probably deserved to be on the list. I think. I so saw. I had uh, like a kind of like an honorable mention the magical sword because I remember like just wanting that sword that shot and and uh, and and not just the one that that hit the guy in front mm -hmm. of you. So I was, I was super excited to get that. You realize it shot whenever he was at full Correct. strength. Correct. Yeah, yeah, you need okay. it, but you couldn't do that until you got it though, no. right? You could do that with the wooden sword. Yeah, you could do it with the really. Wooden sword. Yeah. Okay. I thought you had to talk to the man in like the like the forest or something like that to get it or whatever. No. Nope. No. And Link to the Past, I think you need the Master Sword to shoot yeah. beams. Huh, As okay. Your, yeah. That, those beams were heck of weak. Though. Yeah, they had the... <laughs> I just remember playing it when I was a little kid, and uh, I went over to my neighbor's house to play it because he had it. Um, and uh, I just remember wanting to get that sword or whatever. So. Yeah. I mean, there there was the candle. The candle was cool, especially when you got the red candle. The red candle. So you could light shit everywhere. Yeah, and there's like a blue candle too, the right? The blue candle something. was weak, but I mean, it served its purpose, but it just sucked that you can only use it once per uh, screen that you were in. Was that the first game where you could save your progress? I believe so. We talked about that before. I'm yeah. pretty sure that it was. Yeah. It was for Nintendo. I remember it kind of blew my mind as a kid. I was like, wait, you could save? Yeah. What? And I hit the, the, the map and the gold, uh, the gold game and stuff. He also had the rings on that game that would uh, yeah, make yeah. you uh, strong. It, basically, half the damage that you would absorb. I feel like some of my, my youth was deprived because I didn't own any of the Lo uh, Zelda games. Mm. So, um, and there was a power bracelet you could that's equip right. and move shit with. That's right. The that's raft right. and the ladder. The raft, the ladder. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I could have done my top five just with Link mm. accessories, but uh, I wanted to use other things. Just to be clear, as far as top five accessories, I didn't do a very good job in terms of making them accessories. I, I did a lot of weapons. That, the way that I interpreted it is like non... Non-primary weapon. Non-primary weapon. Like like with Scorpion, I, I wouldn't consider his spear to be his primary weapon. Just kicking ass is his primary <laughs> weapon. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. And Mega Man, of course, the... Uh, the the Buster Cannon is his primary weapon, so I went with the, the Metal Blade. When I was eight, the spear was my, my primary <laughs> weapon in World of Combat. Yeah. <laughs> I, thought about, I thought about doing the body armor in, in James Bond, actually. That um, would have been an accessory. That, that definitely would have been an accessory and stuff. And that man, would have that, met that, the qualifications that set forth by Brad and Brandon. Yeah, <laughs> and then definitely, you know, sometimes got you the, the level or got you that extra kill. So, oh, yeah. Like a second life. I mean, the thing's crucial. And, when sure. you, and you hear that noise, that zzz. Yeah. <laughs> and, when you, and when you see your opponent on the other screen getting it, you're like, ah, oh, oh, you're done. <laughs> yeah. It's fucked up. Mm -hmm. So it's good having Matt on. Thanks, guys. Will it's you uh, come back? Uh, yeah, I think so. Oh, as, long as, uh, as long as you guys do the recording at a time, I can come. That's cool. cool. Do you want to say a couple things about Battleground? Oh man, uh, what a, it, it was such a bad ending. It was down. largely disappointing. I think it was a bad beginning and a bad ending. <laughs> yeah, man. The but, only good thing that happened the whole time was the Rhodes family won. Yeah, the Rhodes family <laughs> beat the shield no, to get that, their jobs. That back. wasn't even the good thing. It was when Goldust barked in between, <laughs> in between the uh, talking and uh, watching a uh, Dusty. Uh, uh, break character and laugh. Yeah. Really <laughs> <funny>. <laughs> he like didn't bark. He like hissed like a snake. He was like, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> but that was pretty cool. I mean, and then, and then uh, seeing Cody Rhodes, uh, apparently has a lisp I didn't know about. That's kind of funny, <laughs> too. Not that lists were funny, but... Yeah. <laughs> there, there were good moments in the night, but uh, the, the results of the matches were largely disappointing. That was really the only one that I was in favor of occurring. And the Wyatt family. Oh, of course. Bray Wyatt. Oh, when he did that creepy crawl thing. The bridge the crawl thing. Yeah. And then he <laughs> fell on his head. <laughs> I heard there was a, a good thing with the Great Khali that I missed, but I imagine that was enjoyable. Oh, uh, you kind of saw it when he was in the giant spin. Yeah. You know, slow was, motion. But I didn't see I just saw him, yeah, in slow motion like one time. Yeah. Really. That was a good match. That, that that was a good match in terms of what happened in it, and I, I also like the result because as much of heels as the real Americans are, I do like, <laughs> like them, and I want them to stick around. Yeah. So in order to stick around, they do have to get wins every now and then. Did you they make lose every time? Did they make any racist comments to uh, the oh, Great yeah. Collie? Not no. to the Great Collie. No. No. <laughs> I don't think so. Well, they they called him a non-American, <laughs> and they talked about the Hispanic population and the Canadians that they were sneaking over the borders. Wow. <laughs> the Canadians were border jumping into New York. <laughs> <laughs> well, they call them maple syrup guzzling oh, yeah. immigrants. Something like that. It's classic. Like maple consuming uh, neighbors or something like that. <laughs> Yeah, why, that was, that was why, why is it offensive when they talk about border jumping uh, Mexicans and stuff like that, but yet when you talk about border jumping Canadians, it's just <laughs> hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think Canadians really want to come over here. Yeah. <laughs> no. Oh, man. It's good times. Yeah. Fuck the big show, though, right? You know, I, I think they were. it was funny because the, the way that it ended, it felt like... The, WWE was trying to make Big Show like the good guy, but like people would just Why forget like both, thirty though? seconds before he not he knocked out Daniel Bryan and yeah. <laughs> kept him from winning. It's like what? Why am I gonna root for Big Show now? Yeah. He yeah. just he just screwed both sides. Now we're just left with nothing again. No yeah. one. I I feel <laughs> that I think the only way that he can really gain everybody's uh, popularity again is uh, by doing something to Triple H. I think somebody's got to do something to Triple H one of these days and gotta be a I think Big Show's gotta be knock himself. him out and knock out Stephanie McMahon yeah i like to see oh, him man. actually throw, throw a nice punch though man he didn't even wind up on that knockout <laughs> to Randy Orton and that dude's a big dude so yeah, yeah we're just kind of supposed to believe that Big Show's so, so big that any that's punch true. he throws that's true. is, gonna, that's is true. gonna knock him out that's true he's only really thrown one good knockout punch that I've seen was it to the old guy? No, that one was decent. That's true. But the first one that I saw was to, to Daniel Bryan when Stephanie McMahon was telling him to knock it out. That's true. That one was pretty good. Like, you could see he actually, like, threw a, like, if you were training boxing, it he, somewhat looked like a boxing he, punch. He, he put in extra stomp on that one. Yeah. So, <laughs> definitely made a lot of noise. That's true. <laughs> and a big shout out to Zachary McDaniel for posting those Metroid games. That was tight. He found uh, Super Metroid and Metroid 2. And he, yeah, he's looking for Metroid 1. Yeah. With the alternate cover? I don't know. I don't think <laughs> anyone. <laughs> Someday I'll get around to playing this. I've only played Metroid and Super Metroid. I've never I don't, I've never played any of the uh, N64 or uh, Wii. That's all you really need to play. Really? Yeah. Metroid I mean, Prime Metroid, or other I Amber? love the Metroid Prime ones, but I don't know if you'll get into them because they're like... They're first the person, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, it, that's kind of why I never played them, but I'm sure that the stories are still good. Oh, yeah, they still are. Someday I'll get around to playing them. All right, well, that'll do it for episode 23 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Nick. And Matt. Happy hunting, guys.